Hey, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are going to finish up talking about transduction in this video, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on the retina. So remember, in the previous video, we talked about the different parts of the eye that help gather light waves, um, photomagnetic radiation, and uh, focus that information onto the retina in the back of the eye. And that is where transduction takes place. So we're going to talk a little bit about transduction. Remember, transduction is basically a translation of light energy into a neural impulse so the brain can understand the information. Kind of like if somebody was speaking to you in German and you can hear what they're saying, but the information isn't useful to you unless it's translated into English or whatever your native language is. So remember, transduction is the process of um, sensory signals getting transformed into neural impulses, and then the brain can translate and reconstruct. So in the retina, um, we're talking about the back of the eye along the the periphery of the eyeball uh, it is a tissue paper thin layer of cells. Basically, it's three layers thick, three different types of cells in the retina. And some of them are specialized that respond to particular types of light, long, um, short, uh, long, medium, or short wavelengths. So remember, we have long wavelengths. Um, they have a very long peak to peak, and those are typically seen as red. Um, we have medium wavelengths that are um, seen as green, and then we have short wavelengths, peak to peak, that are seen as blue. And those are um, cones. And we'll take a look at the, the rods and cones and then some of the other cells in there, but one thing to um, pay really close attention to. As light comes through the pupil and the lens and goes to the back of the eye, that um, when light gets to the retina, um, this would be towards the front of the eye here, and this would be towards the back of the eye. And if it's tissue paper thin, that's a really thin layer. But light actually goes all the way through these cells until they get to the very back of the retina where the rods and cones are. Rods and cones are photosensitive. They're the only photosensitive cells. So these other cells in the retina are translucent and they do not respond to light. So light actually has to pass through them before it gets to the rods and cones, um, which is kind of amazing to me. But remember light travels in um, that direction to the back and through the bipolar cells and ganglion cells and then the rods and cones will become activated with certain types of light. So let's take a look at rods first. Look at rods and I'm going to highlight that in dark because they're receptor cells that are responsible for dark vision. Um, rods are functional in dim light and at night. So during the brightness of day, the rods are inactive. Now, the interesting thing about that is the rods are located in the periphery of our eye, so off to the sides, and our cones are lo located in the fovea, in the dead center. So all this stuff in here are rods, and the cones are located predominantly in that center back, kind of like the the target on a bullseye, if you were looking through your pupil to the back of the eye, fovea would be the bullseye. Um, there's about 125 million, whoops, went a little bit too far with that, sorry about that. Um, about 125 million rods in each eye. That's quite a few of them. They're less densely packed than the cones are but they are in the periphery, so remember that. So at night, um, if we want to see something very dimly lit, it's often best to kind of look off to the side. So if we're looking off, to, we want that image to fall on the side of our eye, 
so we can see it better. So think dim light, think night vision, think periphery, think 125 million. And then that brings us to the cones. The cones are where they're downtown. They're in the center of the city of the retina. They are responsible for color vision. There's about 6 million in each eye. So there's less of them, but they're very densely packed around the center. Um, because they're so densely packed, when we're looking straight at something, we can see the best detail, uh, the fine images of something. That's called visual acuity. And we need a lot of light to function here. So these cones function in the daytime, and they don't function at night, really. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, you may be able to see and walk around your room or the house or wherever you live um, because your rods are functioning. But you don't see color at night. So by the light of a full moon, it's really difficult to tell the difference between blues and reds and purples and greens because your cones are not functioning. So when you think of cones, think center, think color, and think detail and about six million of those. And remember that the cones are located in the fovea. That's the area of the retina that is the center. So if we were looking through your pupil at the back of your eye, that fovea is in the dead center. And as you move out um, from the center, you're going to get the rods out in the periphery. Okay. Now, what are the other cells in our eye? So if we look up here, I did... Um, identify some of these. The bipolar cells here, those are the cells in the middle. So when our rods and cones um, fire a message, they're photosensitive. So when light hits them, they transduce light into a neural impulse, and then that impulse moves back out towards the front of the eye. So let me do that in a little bit of different color here. Those signals now move out to the bipolar cells right in here. Um, these cells then gather information. They start collecting data from the rods and cones. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look closely here, and I'm going to get rid of some of this uh, information that I added here so we can see it a little bit better. Um, each cone has its own bipolar cell. So the information is very, kept very pure. And look at this you'll see some bipolar cells are connected to many rods. So the detail in the rods kind of gets lost in the translation, but each cone has its own bipolar cell, okay? And many rods may fit into one bipolar cell. Now, what do the bipolar cells do? They send their information up another level to ganglion cells. That's these cells right here. And the ganglion cells are really important because notice that the message then gets traveled out the back of the eye. So ganglion cells, there's about a one million of them. Um, the axons of the ganglion cells, they start translating information and start processing visual information and send that information to the brain out the back of the eye. And guess where that information leaves? The blind spot. There's got to be a hole in the retina where all those ganglion cells, axons, connect together and form the optic nerve. So the optic nerve leaves through the back of the eye and goes to the brain. Okay. Um, now, an interesting part is also the optic chiasm or chiasm. Um, that's where the... the uh, Optic nerve actually crosses over because information from each eye travels to both sides of the brain. And this is pretty easy to remember if you look at fields of vision. So if we look at this chart here, um, your right field of vision is on the right side of your head, and your left field of vision is over here. Now, information travels to both sides of the eye, but notice over here, Information that travels to the left side of each retina, including the full left side of the fovea, stays and is processed on the left side. So left side of the eye goes to the left side of the brain. 
And information that goes to the right side of the eye um, actually travels to the right side of the brain. Okay? Now, where that information crosses over from each eye is called the optic chiasm, which I think is Latin for crossover, chiasm, if I'm not mistaken. And that means, if you notice, that information from the right side of the eye goes to the left side of, right field of vision goes to the left side of the eye, left field of vision actually travels to the right side of the eye. And that's if we're just staring straight ahead, but we usually scan back and forth so information from our whole field of vision probably travels to both sides of the brain. And then information um, actually travels to the thalamus, and it travels to the LGN, or the lateral geniculate nucleus. And from there, every spot on the retina travels to a corresponding spot um, in our primary visual cortex, which is the occipital lobe. Occipital lobe. That's our primary visual cortex, okay? Uh, now, I don't have much time here. Um, we just talked about the occipital lobe. That's the back part of our brain. That's where visual processing begins and takes place right here. Um, and we'll talk about other types of visual processing like feature detection, abstraction, and parallel processing at a different time. So um, those two videos together should help you understand primary visual processing. Please feel free to rewind. And uh, we will see you soon. Hope this helped.